Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for our coming together. We thank you because our gathering together is unto you. For your word says that unto him shall our gathering be. As we come together this very moment, Lord, we are praying that you will enlighten us in your word in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, we pray that the warning you have for your church. Every part of your church will receive that warning and will not allow your word to fall to the ground in Jesus' name. Assure us of the truth of Scripture so that we'll be able to stand uncompromisingly for the truth you reveal to us in your word in Jesus' name. Lead us into your truth. Plant our feet in the truth. Help us to so stand in the truth and for the truth that we'll be able to reach out to other people with the truth in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. We're looking at the words of Jesus Christ in Mark Chapter 13, verse 33, and verse 37. Take heed, watch, and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Verse 37, and what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. We want to consider Christ's warning for his church. Christ spoke quite a lot concerning the truth of Scripture, concerning that truth that will lead us from earth to heaven. And when Christ spoke, he spoke with authority because the Father had given him that authority. The Bible bears record that whenever Jesus taught, or whenever he spoke, he spoke not as the scribes, or as the Sadducees, or as the Pharisees, because they did not know what they were talking about. They did not know the way to the Father. But Jesus knew very surely he knew certainly the truth coming from the Father's heart. And then he emphasized and affirmed that the things that he said, he said them as the Father 
had given him. And so, as we come to listen to the very words of Christ today, it will be very fitting that every one of us will pay attention and see what he has to say. When Christ, the head of the church, speaks, even apostles, pastors, evangelists, teachers, or prophets, ministers or members in the church must listen without argument, with willingness to obey, because he is the way, the truth, and the life, and is the only true way into life, is the personification of the truth. Everything is said was truth in its entirety. In the words that Jesus spoke, we have some warnings. And that is why we're considering Christ's warning for his church. His warnings should be read and heard over and over. Warnings are given because there is danger. If there were no danger, why would any reasonable person ever give any warning? Not only that, because it was avoidable danger. That's the reason Jesus gave the warning. If the danger were unavoidable, nothing you could do about it at all. Jesus would not have bothered to give any warning at all yet. The danger that Jesus Christ warned about, though avoidable, also has other characteristics. Number one, it was certain, sure danger. If it were not real, if it were imaginary, Jesus Christ will not have sounded the very strict, serious warning that he gave. So understand, it is certain, real, sure danger. Number two, present danger. If it were danger in the past, why would Jesus have to give us any warning? If it were danger after we had died, why will Jesus Christ give us any warning? But because it is present danger, so Jesus gave warning. Number three, it was because it's universal danger. That is why he said, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Which means the danger will not be localized danger. It will not be danger in a particular tribe, in a particular community. It is universal. Therefore, what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Number four, it is subtle danger. You see, if it were danger that everybody could recognize, that every member of the church could see very easily, very clearly, without a higher voice warning us, Jesus would not have warned the way he did. But because the trap of the devil, the snare of the devil, the danger that will be brought upon this world and upon the people that are called Christians by the devil and by the messengers of the devil will be so subtle. In fact, Jesus said, if it were possible, the very elect will be deceived. That's why he gave warning. Number five, terrifying danger. The consequences of the danger, if we fall into them, will be so terrifying and terrible that Jesus Christ, with all his wisdom, with all his power, with all the words at his command, he gave the warning to the church. Certain, real, present, universal, subtle, terrifying, danger, yet avoidable. And it is because it's avoidable, that is why the Lord himself had given us the warnings that he gives in scripture. 
Therefore, if you are really part of the church of the living God, you will take note of the words of Jesus Christ. As I said, I'm speaking on Christ's warning for his church. When we talk about the church, we're talking about the congregation, the assembly, the group of people that are blood washed. So these are the groups of blood washed disciples. These are the born again children of God. These are the transformed followers of Christ. These are the committed converts who worship the Lord in spirit and truth. These are the people that have surrendered themselves to the Lord Jesus Christ to become the captives of Christ. They have yielded themselves to the absolute authority and lordship of Jesus Christ. They are referred to as the people of God, the family of God, the church of the living God. They are referred to as the sheep of the shepherd, the blood-washed, peculiar people of God. It is to these that Jesus Christ gave the warning. And if as you are here this day, you happen to know that you have been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, a member of the family of God, you have assurance your name is in the book of life. There is that witness of the Spirit of God with your spirit that you are a child of God, a son or a daughter of God. It will be necessary then to listen to your Lord. It will be necessary to listen to Christ, your Savior and Lord, who has brought us in reconciliation with God. And God becomes not just your creator, he has now become your heavenly Father. And so we want to look at the warning that Jesus Christ gave to his own church. As usual, there are three subtitles, subheadings for us to consider. Number one, Christ, our Savior, Teacher, Prophet, and Lord. Christ, our Savior, Teacher, Prophet, and Lord. Number two, deception by false prophets. Deception by false prophets. Number three, believers' attitude to false prophets. The words we consider today are very essential, very important. One, we need to understand that Christ who gave these warnings we're considering was full of love and is still full of love. And in his love, he saw danger ahead and he knew that his people, the people he was going to die for, that if they did not take heed, they were going to fall into the ditch and they were going to endanger their lives. And eternity was at stake. Because of that, with the heart full of love, he gave the warning to his own people. Today, whenever God uses a preacher, a minister, to sound a note of warning to the church of the living God, some people will say, is that of love? Oh yes. If I knew that your house was on fire and you were sleeping carelessly without even knowing that the house was on fire, it will be love if I struck you, if I woke you up, if I sounded the alarm, if I cried aloud without sparing, telling you your house is on fire and you might be burnt to death. Jesus Christ, knowing that if a person went into sin, if a person was confused, if a person was uh, 
distracted away from the truth of the word of God and he died in that condition of confusion and darkness and error and false doctrine and sin and backsliding that he will end up in the eternal lake of fire because of that knowledge in Christ he gave the warnings that he gave you know what we're going to do is to look at the very message of Jesus Christ because we know he was the true teacher. How do you know a counterfeit? By comparing that counterfeit coin with the genuine. How do you know something that is false? By knowing that which is true. And that is why I make the first point. Christ, our Savior, our teacher, our prophet, and our Lord. Because if we can determine if we can know where Christ stands, we know that is the truth. And any prophet, any teacher, anyone that says anything different from what Christ is saying, from what Christ has taught, then we will know if Christ is true. Any other person, any other individual contradicting Christ must be false. That's why point one is so very important. And I guess we're going to spend some time on that point one. In John chapter 3. John chapter 3, verse 2. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Nicodemus, a member of the highest council among the Jews, a member of the Sanhedrin, a ruler of the synagogue, he came to the Lord Jesus Christ, and here is the testimony we know that thou art a teacher come from God. We know other teachers who come from seminary. You come from God. We know other teachers who have come from the libraries of the world. You come from God. We know other teachers who have come from the wilderness. And by staying in the wilderness, they said they had some voices. And they said that they saw some things. And they said they had some dreams. But we know you are a teacher come from God, no other qualification. Was he alone in saying that? No. He said, we know. He said, this is not my personal, private opinion. I have conferred with others. And all of us, we have watched your life. We have watched your teaching. We have watched your anointing. We have watched the result of your ministry. We have watched even what the evil spirits, when they cry aloud, what they say about you. We have watched also the refreshing and the transformation that your teaching brings. There is an evidence. We know thou art a teacher come from God. Not only that, we have seen John the Baptist. And we have seen that at the baptism, even the Father himself bore testimony. We know. No doubt about that. We know thou art a teacher. Come from God. If man should listen to anyone then, to show us the way to God, to reveal to us the mind of God, we should listen to this one, the teacher come from God. That's a testimony of one person. Now, Matthew chapter 7. In Matthew chapter 7, we're told that Jesus Christ just ended memorable sermon, the sermon on the mount. And we're told in the, at the beginning of chapter 5 that the people that listened, they were not just tens and hundreds, they were multitudes. Here is the testimony after he finished in verse 28. And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine. 
For he taught them as one having authority, not as the scribes. So then you can tell, Nicodemus told us, we, members of the Sanhedrin, we, the religious leaders of the nation, we, the people who have studied Old Testament from cover to cover, we, the representatives of God for the people of Israel, we, the people that were supposed to bring the way of the Lord to the people, we have seen you, we have heard you, we have watched you, you are a teacher come from God. Then we turn to the multitudes, and the multitude said, He taught with authority, not as the scribes, but he taught with spectacular, singular authority. In John chapter 8, John chapter 8, verse 28, Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. This is another level of the words of Jesus Christ, the implication of what came out of him. You know, the Bible says out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the truth will be established and confirmed. He said, the Father taught me. And without taking anything away, without adding anything away, I speak these things. And then he said, you may not know that now, but when you have lifted up the Son of Man, when you have crucified him on the cross of Calvary, and then you will see the Father will give the approval by making him to rise up the third day. That resurrection will be a proof to you that all the things I spoke, I spoke as the Father taught me. What Jesus said then, what Jesus preached then, becomes the standard, the yardstick. It becomes the truth, the unchanging, infallible, unadulterated truth. And every other thing that any other person preaches, we are to compare with that truth. In John chapter 12 and verse 49. John chapter 12 verse 49. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment what I should say and what I should speak and I know that his commandment is life everlasting whatsoever I speak therefore even as the father said unto me so I speak you see the testimony of Jesus Christ he said the father agrees with everything that I teach Everything that I say, in fact, it said, it originated from the Father. It was given unto me, and I've given it unto you. It came from the heart of the Father into the mind of the Son. And without twisting it, without distorting it, without changing it, without adding to it, Without subtracting from it, he said, I have given it to you. He said, I speak these things as the Father has given unto me. That's why we're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Reading from verse 11. For all the foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If you are planted on Jesus if you are established on Jesus, if you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you are rooted and grounded in Christ and the teachings of Christ, then will you know you've got the right foundation that you can build upon and when the Lord will come eventually and everything you have done and said will be tested by fire, then you know you will stand because you have been built on that solid unshakable, unchanging foundation. Now, when Jesus had taught the people, he also gave a commission, a commandment, a charge. 
unto his own disciples and through his disciples to the whole church until they will come again that everything that he taught is what the church shall continue to teach in Matthew chapter 28 from verse 19 and 20 go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost teaching them to observe all things all things all things whatsoever I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even unto the end of the world it says teaching them to observe it says in any nation at any time until it will come again teaching them all those doctrines and all those teachings unto the very end of the world which means then until this very time the church is still to stand by the teachings the doctrines of Christ what he taught the truth that he gave that is what we are to stand upon and I'll just run through very quickly the things that Jesus taught and many of us from all that we have been hearing we will know perhaps almost everything already or maybe you know the majority of them but there's no harm I repeat them because you know there's repetition in scripture if you look at Matthew and you look at Mark and you look at Luke and you look at John you will see that those four Gospels they are saying virtually the same thing why would Matthew have to say it and Mark said it and Luke said it and John said it because repetition makes for emphasis and if God has seen it pitch to give us a repetition over and over and over again what should we do we should then make a repetition of these things that are very cardinal very important have you read your Old Testament very well and some of the stories accounts that you have in first Kings you will also go to Chronicles and you will see them again in fact, some of the accounts that were written in Genesis and in Exodus, when you come on to Chronicles, it starts all over again to be telling you, have you compared Ezra and Nehemiah? Have you looked at even some of the Psalms, that a particular Psalm will just go through like that, you come to another Psalm and you have exactly those same things. Have you compared 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy and Titus? Have you seen the qualifications in Timothy? When you read Titus, have you seen them again? Have you compared Ephesians and Colossians? Have you seen that the things you read in Ephesians, then you have repetition again in, um, in Colossians? Have you read Daniel and Zechariah and the Revelation? Have you seen the things that are spoken up here? They are spoken up there. Why? Because God deliberately... He will make those repetitions so that you'll be very assured of them. There'll be no doubt in your mind that this is the very word of God. If I make any repetition then of what you already know, of what others have already emphasized, then you understand I do it deliberately and I do it according to scripture. Well then, Jesus said teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you as we look at the words of Jesus Christ he said number one he talked about scripture I'm sure you know that that the Bible the completeness of the Bible Old Testament and New Testament he spoke about them and his conclusion is scripture cannot be broken and whenever he referred to scripture, he referred to the scripture with all authority. And I don't have time, he quoted from Genesis. When he said, for this cause, shall a man leave his 
father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall become one flesh. Do you know that he quoted from Exodus? Do you know that he quoted from Leviticus? Do you know that he quoted from Numbers? Do you remember when he said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so shall the Son of Man be lifted up. He quoted from Deuteronomy. When the devil came to him and tempted him and said, You will turn this into bread. He said, No, because it is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And he defeated the devil by it is written. Didn't he quote from the Psalms? Whose son do you say that David is? And uh, that the Messiah will be Christ is. And he said of, um, of David. And he said, how is it that David in the spirit also called him Lord? You see, Jesus Christ believed the scriptures. And if you are a child of God, that is the truth. If you are a child of God, you will stand by that same thing. In fact, Jesus Christ said, a man is scribe that is taught in the word. It's like a householder who brings out old and new. You see that? Jesus knew that the Old Testament will be there and the New Testament will be there. And he concluded everything by saying, isn't this what I told you? That everything that had been written in the scriptures must be fulfilled concerning the Son of Man. Jesus believed the scripture. For Jesus Christ, the Bible was the final authority. Number two. Jesus Christ believed in the Godhead. I just read it to you now. When he said, go, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Oh yes, he believed it, and he stood for it, and he affirmed it. Number three, Jesus Christ, he believed in the very fact that he was going to die, and he will be buried, and he will rise again. Isn't that what he was telling them after Peter had said, we know who thou art, you are the very Son of the living God. Then at that time, Jesus began to reveal to them in Matthew chapter 16, and in verse 21, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto, the, unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. So then, when we talk about Jesus Christ, born of a virgin, Jesus Christ living a sinless life. Do you remember what he said in John chapter 8 and verse 46? He looked at all his detractors and all his enemies. He said, which of you convinces me of sin? He lived a sinless life. He also talked about his death. And he talked about his resurrection. In fact, when he rose from the dead, he said, how is it that you are so dull of hearing? that you did not know all that had been written in the book of God in the scriptures how that the son of man must die and be buried and rise the third day Jesus Christ also believed in the total depravity of man isn't that what he said in Mark chapter 7 when he was telling them that the things that come with, from within, they are the things that defile a man. Here is it in Mark chapter 7 verse 21. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, and evil eye, blasphemy pride foolishness all these evil things come from within and defile the man he believed in the total depravity of man you know the reason i'm telling you all this you will know christ our savior the teacher the lord the prophet he emphasized all these doctrines how do we know a true prophet if you are like christ emphasizing the same thing he emphasized Preaching the same thing that he preached. And affirming the same thing that he affirmed. Did he not talk about repentance? Oh yes. He spoke about repentance many times. Do you remember the scripture? When Jesus Christ said, the son of man is come. Not to call the righteous, the self-righteous. But to call sinners to repentance. Another time, they had come to show him. 
how Pilate had mingled the blood of the people with their sacrifices. Then he replied to them and said, Do you think that those people are greater sinners than all the rest of the people? Then he said, Except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. At the beginning of his ministry, he said, The kingdom of God is at hand. And then he said, Repent ye and believe the gospel. After he rose from the dead, did he emphasize repentance? Didn't he say that repentance must be preached in his name among all nations beginning in Jerusalem? Oh yes, Jesus emphasized repentance. Did you hear Jesus teaching on restitution? Didn't he, wasn't he the one that said, when you bring your gift to the altar, and there you remember that someone, your neighbor, your brother, has ought against you, leave your gift there, Go back to your brother and reconcile with him. And then come back and offer your gift. Jesus Christ emphasized restitution. How about salvation and faith? Jesus Christ emphasized that we are saved by faith. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him is on the basis of faith. Whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. In John chapter 3 verse 36 it says, He that believeth on the Son has life. He that believeth not on the Son has not life, but the wrath of God abides in him. Didn't he emphasize water baptism? He emphasized it. He said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. At the last time, when the disciples asked him, where shall we eat the Passover? And then he told them, he gave them the instruction. And after that instruction, when they made ready, then we are told that Jesus gathered the people together. He said, take this, eat and drink. I will no more drink with you until we come into the kingdom to drink it. Then he said, do this in remembrance of me. That's in Luke chapter 20 and verse 19. Did he teach sanctification? At the last time, when Jesus knew that all things had been done, and then he began to pray for his own disciples in John chapter 17, and he was the one that said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. For their sakes, I consecrate myself, I sanctify myself, so that they also might be sanctified, that they may all be one, as thou art in me, and I in you, that they may be one in us, that they may be made perfect in one. So then, when we teach sanctification, when we teach Christian perfection, it is because of what Jesus said, when he said, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, if anybody then will tell us that there is no sanctification, there is no holiness. When Jesus Christ himself said, except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, ye shall in no wise get into the kingdom of God. If anyone then will tell us that there is nothing like holiness, nothing like sanctification, we know that he is different from Christ. If he's different from Christ, then we know that he is not of the truth. What did Jesus teach concerning the Holy Ghost baptism? The disciples had seen him. When he rose from the dead in Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, then he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Then they asked him whether the kingdom will be returned unto Israel at this time. He said, it is not for you to know the time or the season that the Father had put in his own hand. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Did he teach on healing? Oh yes, he did. Do you remember his words? When he told his own disciples, The works I do, ye shall do also. 
and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to the Father. Didn't he tell them, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils, they shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Did he teach on evangelism? His words, we quote his words many times, and you have heard his words many times, when he himself said, Go, teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Don't you know that Jesus Christ is the one that said, Go and preach the gospel to every creature. Did he teach on marriage? Oh yes, they came to ask him a question. Whether a man can put away his wife for every cause, and he said, have you not read? He that made them at the beginning. He went back to the beginning. He didn't give us Abraham as an example. He didn't give us David as an example. Have you not read? He that made them from the beginning. He made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall join, shall cleave. That word cleave means you'll be glued. If you know glue, it will be glued unto his wife. And then he says what God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. Did he teach about the rapture? Oh yes, he did. It's in John chapter 14. From verse 1, that Jesus Christ began to talk to his own disciples concerning this important teaching on the rapture. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Will the rapture take place before the tribulation? Oh yes, because of the words of Jesus. He said, as it was. In the time of Noah, the words of Jesus, as they were eating and drinking, it came upon them unawares as Noah entered into that ark, the ark of safety. Before the flood began, so the church will be taken away at the rapture, before the time of the great tribulation. So then, there will be first the rapture. At that time of the rapture, the saints who had died, who had been in the graves, they will hear the voice of the Son of Man. They will hear the sound of the trumpet, and then they will rise from the dead. Not only that, as they rise from the dead, we which are alive, as we are here together now, we which are alive, immediately they rise from the dead, our body will be changed. Corruption will put on incorruption, and then will be translated to go up with them in the air. Look at the words of Jesus in John chapter 5 concerning the resurrection. Open your Bibles. John chapter 5, verse 28. Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming, at the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and shall come forth, they that have done good, unto the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil, unto the resurrection of life damnation. Those are the very words of Jesus Christ. Did he teach about the great tribulation? A time of trouble. A time of wrath. A time of indignation. After the church would have been taken away in the rapture. And then the great tribulation will come upon Israel and upon the world, upon believing people. The words of Jesus Christ tell us in Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. From verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. No, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake. Because of the children of Israel, then it said, those days shall be shortened. Terrible time. A day of real trouble, real suffering. The Bible says there had never been anything like that before. Those are the words of Jesus Christ. Then after that great tribulation will be the second coming of the Lord.
that he will appear in power, in great glory, and in the clouds. In Matthew chapter 26. Matthew chapter 26, verse 64. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. So then, the Lord is coming again. Now you know you've been listening to the word of God in this church and you would have heard that immediately he comes. That he is after the second coming. He will establish his reign. And he will have the millennial reign. That Jesus Christ shall reign. And maybe you have listened to the song that says, Jesus will reign wherever there is sun. Now, did Jesus give any indication that he will reign, literally have a throne and reign? Well, look at Matthew chapter 19 and in verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit, shall sit, in the throne of his glory ye shall sit upon the twelve thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So then there will be the millennial reign. Not only that, you know that he talked about hell fire. In fact, he spoke about hell more than any other preacher. In the whole Bible, if you collect what everybody else said, all the other people, if you collect what they said on hellfire together, all the information will not be up to what Jesus Christ said. In fact, when we talk about hellfire, Jesus Christ talked about hellfire more than he talked about water baptism, more than he talked about the Lord's Supper, more than he talked about marriage, more than he talked about tithes and offerings. More than he talked about love. More than he talked about quite a lot of other things. It means that it is so definite, it is so sure. There is a place called hell fire. A place of torment. A place where all the sinners that have died in their sins, they will be tormented forever and ever. Let's see what the Bible has to say concerning that. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 41. The words of Jesus again. Then shall he say also unto them, On the left hand depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. He said, These that do not know the Lord, do not believe the Lord, that they will depart from him. And then it says, They will go into everlasting fire. Did he talk about heaven, the new heaven and the new earth? Oh yes, he talked about that. Did he talk about the great white throne judgment? Oh yes, he spoke about that in John. In fact, he tells us that all judgment has been committed into his hand. In John chapter 5, John chapter 5, verse 22. For the Father judges no man. But he has committed all judgment unto the Son. And then he spoke about heaven. I just read to you, in my father's house are many mansions. In my father's house are many mansions. And John tells us, I see the new Jerusalem coming as a dawn for husband, as a bride adorned for the husband. And he gives us the dimensions and the measurements, telling us over there there will be many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. I pray that none of us will miss that place in Jesus' name. Perhaps you are wondering in your mind, why did I have to go through all those doctrines of the Bible? To tell you that we have not followed cunningly devised fables. To tell you that the things that we have followed and the things that we are teaching and the things we stand upon, they come from this teacher that has come from heaven, come from God. They come from the authoritative Christ 
who has given us everything. And then, if anyone teaches otherwise, contrary to what Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, the life, the personification of the truth. If anyone teaches contrary to Christ, then we will know that Christ is true. But that man will be a false prophet. And now Jesus told us that very definitely false prophets will come. That leads me now to point two. Point two. Be awake and open your Bibles. Help the one by your side. If anyone is dozing, make sure that we all concentrate on the word of God. How can we be talking about the words of your Lord and your Master and your Savior and your Redeemer and your Great Shepherd and you will not allow the word to sink deep into your ears. In fact, Jesus said, let these sayings sink deep into your ears. Point number two. Deception by false prophets. In Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 15. Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but outwardly they are ravening wolves. Here Jesus Christ called his own disciples. He said, there is danger. Certain danger. Real danger. Present danger. Universal danger. Subtle danger. Terrifying danger. Yet avoidable danger. He said, beware because there is danger. Christian, walk carefully. Walk prayerfully. All the same, walk hopefully. Because danger is near. And the danger that Jesus spoke about was a very subtle danger. It says, beware of false prophets, of the people that will profess to be speaking from God. But they will be affirming and saying and teaching things that are different from what Jesus Christ has taught and affirmed. And he said, they will come in a very mild, meek, sheepish, good appearance. They will come in sheep's clothing. And a sheep could easily be deceived. But then he said, inwardly, their motive, their desires, and their plan is to tear you to pieces, is to take the confidence of your faith away from you, is to destroy you. He said, they are ravening wolves. And you say, how would we know? Jesus said, ye shall know them by their fruits. But then he said, there are some things that deceive people. And one of the things that deceive people be signs and wonders. That the people will say, but look, he's healing the sick. Look, he's laying hands on people, they are falling on the ground. Luke is speaking in tongues. Luke is prophesying. See, he is doing many wonders. See, I have some of his literature and the report of many miracles. Look at it. Jo uh, Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone. Have you opened it? I said, have you opened it? Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. And if you are wondering what is the will of his Father in heaven, I just read everything to you from Scripture. I just gave you all the cardinal doctrines that Jesus preached, and by the grace of God that we also preach, following after Jesus. And therefore, if anyone will be called of God, you will go through all those teachings and the totality of the word of God. Of course, Jesus also spoke about self-denial. He also spoke about you not being of the world as he is not of the world. He also spoke about uh, carrying your cross, bearing your cross. He also spoke about faith and spoke about prayer and talked about fasting. Everything that Jesus spoke about, you will walk in the will of God. Then he said in verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? In thy name? 
and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works, then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk iniquity, ye workers of iniquity. And so then we understand that Jesus has sounded the warning. Your mind will tell you it doesn't matter. He will help me. I have not got counseling from my own local pastor. And I have not got counseling from the pastor in the central church. I think I would rather go there. After all, I need attention. But you are not going to get the right attention. And it is better not to get wrong attention. And to wait. And to be patient. Until the person you know. You know his family life. You know his teaching. You know it's in and out. You know his life. You know that this one is following after Christ. Go to your pastor for counseling. Rather than you go here, you go there. Everywhere you hear they are making noise somewhere. Carrying Bibles somewhere. Prophesying in the name of Jesus somewhere. Every prayer house. Every backyard. A place of worship. You are scattering there. Make sure that you stand upon the word of God. And if it's not possible for you to directly see your pastor because maybe he's too busy, why don't you write? If you will write, then you'll be able to communicate that same need that you have. Rather than we hear that you are there today, you are there tomorrow, and you are going to look at what they're doing over there. Beware and follow the words of the Lord. They will come to you in sheep's clothing. But it is to deceive. And once they begin to say, well, the Bible says so, but run away from them. Anybody that will put a but on the Bible. Anybody that will say, yes, we know the Bible says that, but actually, as at now, the way we understand it, and they begin to twist the Bible, you will run away from them, whoever that individual may be. I pray God will help us to watch. In Matthew chapter 24, Matthew chapter 24 and verse 24, Jesus said, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets that shall show great signs and wonders, not ordinary signs and wonders. Some people will say, Brother so and so late, although he's no more with us, but look at the miracle. Look at the healing. Ah, if you stay there, you'll be deceived. Jesus said that they will demonstrate great signs and wonders. I'm not saying they are demonstrating any signs and wonders. I'm not seeing any of these present day people that have left the truth, that have left the fountain of living waters, that have left all the things they stood for before, that have left the foundation, which is Christ, that have left any part of the word of God, that are now bringing in worldliness and gossiping and evil speech, and that are doing things, slandering, and doing things that are evil. I've not seen any of them reporting all these great signs and wonders that we're talking about. But Jesus said, even if it were possible, that somebody will leave the sound doctrine concerning marriage, will leave the sound doctrine concerning the fact that we need to walk straight and walk holy and walk upright and walk righteous, if that person will even have great signs and wonders, he said that you should not be deceived. He said, in so much that it were, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. I pray that I will not be deceived. In all these years, a lot of people have seen me. A lot of people have met me. And a lot of preachers have come and gone. And many of them, whenever they come to this city of Lagos, they normally will, will come to me sometimes. And then they will say, look at this book. And look at this. And look at that. And I'll say, thank you very much. The Bible is in all. The word of God. And some of them have even preached directly. I'm telling you that from the very beginning of this ministry, I've had to contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. In the early 70s, in the late 70s, in the early 80s, in the late 80s, I found people, they discussed with me directly. 
and uh, you know a lot of things that have taken place in the east many times some of those people that are perpetrating the thing they will come to me in fact when some things were taking place at Unicha many years ago and connected with Enugu connected with a lot of places in the east and those people you know, they will tell me that somebody just sat down like this and he just held the pen and was just writing in the spirit. And this illiterate just wrote about 24 pages or more. And then some people came to me, they said, you are a teacher. God has given them a prophet there, an apostle there, and this one there. And they said, great signs are happening. Wonders are happening. They said, the Lord has sent them to me, that I will come to Onicha at that time, and that I will give in the ministry of the teacher to complete the uh, apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher ministry. And I said, that thing is not of God, that I will not join. Some of the people in Lagos, they were deceived. Some of the people ran to me. They said that prophecy came out. That God said that he's finished for the city of Lagos. That he was going to destroy Lagos. And that therefore everybody should run. There was a particular sister that resigned her appointment. And a particular man that got his wife and ran. And they all went to Nietzsche by that time. And he said, make announcement at the Bible study at that time. That danger was coming. That God was going to destroy the city of Lagos. I told them, we have more than 10 righteous people in the church. And that God said, if I see 10 righteous people there, final. And then I stayed here. Those people resigned their job. Who gave up their ministry? Who gave up a lot of things and ran? And then they came to me. They, they said they fasted, two of them, they came. They fasted three days, not eating, not drinking. And after the fasting, without breaking the fast, according to them, they came directly to me. And they were very, very bold, authoritative. While they were talking, they said, Thus says the Lord, the Lord has sent us because we just came out of these three days fasting and then he said, you should come over to that other side and join us. If you don't, here is the word of the Lord. And then they said that I will die. And I said, sudden death, sudden glory. That if I died, I'll be going to God. I said, wait a minute. You're seeing somebody you cannot terrify with death. Oh death, where is thy victory? And O grave, where is thy sting? Because death is swallowed up in victory. And then I spoke to them. Do you know? After they had fasted three days and they came to talk to me, they said, I should join them, I should join them. I spoke to them straight. One of them was delivered. That same week. And then he came back to me and he said, When you were talking, the Lord spoke to me. And then he changed. The other fellow was not convinced immediately. But after some months, he boycotted all those things at Onicha, and then he came back to deeper life. It is good to stand with the truth. Stand with the word of God. And I've seen a lot of wind blow all these various years. But thank God we're standing. I said, thank God we're standing. And I pray that every one of you will keep on standing on the truth in Jesus' name. Uh, you know, all over this year, some people have said, change the doctrine of marriage. I said, nothing like that. They said, change the doctrine on this area. I said, nothing like that. I said, God has raised up this deeper life to earnestly contend for the faith. Once delivered unto the saints. And I'm really grateful to God because he has honored his name. He has glorified his name. And here we have a lot of people believing in the Lord and believing the Bible. I pray that the Bible, the word of God, the Lord has given you. Nothing will ever be able to take it away from you in Jesus' name. But you know, I lost friends. The people that were just together like this in the early days. In the early days, the people that were evangelized together. We did this together, we did that together, and they began to read some books and some materials and began to listen to some cases. And they said, bro, get this, bro, get this. And then I said, this thing is different. Yes, they said, but in a particular case, they said, it would give us atomic power. 
And then there was a book they showed me, and the fellow said, I will give you all the books for free. You will not pay for it at all. I said, I've not finished reading my Bible. I've got the word of God. And I rejected all those things. I'm telling you, I'm so sorry for them. If I even mention their names now, because it's so many years ago, they've left the work of God. They've scattered. There's nothing happening there. A man died some time ago in Aquaibum. If I mention his name, you'll know his name, but I will not. And this man, we were together in the early days. Oh, we went about. And he was a great preacher, militant preacher. In fact, in, in my younger days, whenever we were in Lagos, I invited them. Sometimes they invited them to the Unilag. Sometimes they invited them to Akiwumi Street. And that man, oh, that man can preach. That man can preach. I'll sit down in the pew like you are sitting in the pew now. And I will listen to that man. He will take the Bible like this. He will go from Genesis to Revelation. And I will cry and say, oh God, how can I preach like this man? But they began to play with women. And they began to teach some erroneous doctrines. That some people are born demons. And they can never repent. They said a lot of things. And immediately I saw that, although I didn't have all the charisma they had, all the power they had, all the great, great things they had, I just went apart. And I will, I will not cooperate again. And the little that God allowed me to do, I was doing. But before he died, some years ago, because he had gone into immorality, a lot of things had happened. And then I went to Port Harcourt. Uh, to go and see the work of the Lord. And he happened to be passing outside. And it was a time we were finishing our Bible study that I went for. And he saw people trooping out. And that time we were using a particular uh, community hall or so in Port Harcourt. And he was passing. And at that time, his ministry has, you know, divided and things have gone down. And it was just roaming about. Nobody will invite him for crusade. Things have been bad at that time. And then he said, this is night. Are they having market here? They said, no. They said, that is deeper life. Deeper life. Is that not the one that came from Lagos? People said, yes. And he said, even the man, he came to visit them. He rushed in without looking for any usher. And he was looking for me. Then he saw me and he grabbed me. He said, you said so. And he said, see, all these people, I've been hearing. I didn't know it is like this. He said, please permit me that I will come to Lagos and come and stay with you. Maybe I can get the fire back. See, and eventually he died. When he died, his people wrote to me, sent his picture and the obituary. They said, your friend, because they remembered many, many years ago. But were we really friends? When I went this way, the straight, narrow way that leads unto glory, and he accepted and remained in the broad way. And I looked up and I said, God, it pays to stand with the truth. And I wouldn't say I have suffered. No, I have not suffered. God has been keeping me. He has been helping me. I have not tasted the suffering, the agony, the desertion, my friends. Like Paul, the apostle, suffered. God has so protected me. He has protected his word. And look at it the way we rejoice today. But we are in sound doctrine because I took my stand. What if before you became born again, I had gone into error? How would you have been in this place today? God has helped me to stand. God can help you to stand. For the sake of the church, for the sake of the coming generation, for the sake of our children, for the sake of our wives, for the sake of the people that are not born again yet, for the sake of our own lives, for the sake of Christ who died on the cross of Calvary, let us stand together. I don't need to finish the outline, let us stand. 
let us stand. We'll stand together on the truth of the word of God. We'll stand together on teaching this word of God, contending earnestly for the faith, contending earnestly for the faith, contending earnestly for the faith, contending earnestly for the faith once delivered unto the saints. We shall stand. We shall stand. We shall stand. Let us stand on the word of God. Let us stand on the word of God. Don't change, don't change, don't change. Remain, 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 remain with the word of God. The winds may blow, the flood may come, the storm may come, the enemy may roar, the lions may roar, the false prophets might come, they may threaten you. Remain in the word of God. Remain in the word of God. And the end will be wonderful. And the end will be wonderful. And the end will be wonderful. Stand on the word of God. Stay with the word of God. Jesus Christ has given us the warning. Make sure that you don't deviate. Make sure that you don't go aside. Make sure that you don't allow anything to shift you away from the truth of the word of God. Your friend, your wife, your husband, your neighbors, fellow church members, anyone, make sure that you are standing on this word of God that remains and abides forever. Will you stand? If Jesus tarries five years from now, will you still be here? If Jesus tarries ten years from now, where will you be? Will you still be here? Will you still be standing on the unchanging, infallible, unbending word of God? What will separate us from the love of Christ? Tribulation? Pestilence? Farming? What is it? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, angels nor principalities, things present nor things to come, shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. In all these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us and gave himself for us. Keep standing on the truth. Keep standing on the word of God. Keep standing on the truth. Keep standing on the word of God. That nothing, nothing, nothing on earth and nothing from hell will be able to take us away from the truth of the word of God. Stay with the word. Stay with the Lord. Stay with the conviction of the Bible. Remain with the Lord. Remain with the Lord. Remain with the Lord. And the Lord will stay by you till the very end.
in Jesus' name we pray. So, eh, I say, when we are no one, she make well, Mata ya ma barakala. I say, I say, when we are no one, she make well, Mata ya ma barakala. I say, I say, when we are no one, she make well. Mata ya ma marakala o Oso e Oso e li kwe mbidre no wa Chime kwe la Mata ya ma marakala Oso e Oso e li kwe mbidre no wa Chime kwe la Mata ya ma marakala o Oso e Oso e li kwe mbidre no wa Chime kwe la Mata ya ma marakala Oso e Oso e li kwe mbidre no wa Chime kwe la Mata ya ma marakala Oso e Oso e li kwe mbidre no wa Chime kwe la Mata ya ma marakala Oso e Oso e li kwe mbidre no wa Chime kwe la Mata ya ma marakala Oso e Ose li kwe mbidre no wa Chime kwe la Mata ya ma marakala Our Father we thank you because of this Timely warning To the Saints that are here today we thank you because of what you have spoken to us. The warning is clear. We bless your name because the tears that have dropped on this ground today is not in vain. All the crying of your children calling upon you and asking that we might not go back to where we came from. You have delivered us with a mighty hand. You have set us free with your eternal arm. You have delivered us from the power of darkness. And you have shown us the path to a joyful eternity. Lord, in this place, nothing has been hidden from us. All it that it takes to live a godly life in Christ Jesus. All that it takes to run this race and run it to, the, to a successful end. You have unveiled everything unto us. Father, one thing we are pleading is that our tears today might never be a crocodile tear in Jesus' name. We are asking that as we have decided that we shall stand by the truth. We shall defend the truth. We shall fight for the truth. Oh Lord, whatever it might cost us to stand on this truth and to fight for this truth, give us the grace to do it in Jesus' name. Having known your word, having known your will, and you our Lord, you are Savior and our Prophet. If we don't obey you, who shall we obey? If we are not submissive to you, who shall we be submissive to? Therefore, Lord, today, we are asking in any area, in any form or shape, whereby we are compromising gradually, little by little, getting some little more friends from the world, getting people who are backsliders to be our close associates. Sometimes they try to create a doubt in our minds. Lord, we pray that as we have cried unto you today, and we have taken a stand resolution, we pray that the change will be permanent and realistic in Jesus' name. We have been told that it takes stand decision. Somebody to stand on, to put his feet on the ground. I say, here is the line and I cannot change it. Oh Lord, I pray 
that as we go back into our regions, into our churches, into our various locations, when there will be enticement, when there will, when there will be pools, to deviate, to shake, to bend, to bow. Oh God, give all the grace to stand upright in Jesus' name. Lord, sometimes our pastor may not be near to be looking at us, but your eyes are upon us everywhere. You know our secret. You know our hideouts. Therefore, Lord, we are praying that henceforth, until we run this race to the end, we ask that you give us the grace to keep every word of our Lord and Commander in Jesus' name. We know there are blessedness at the end of the, at the, end of the road. There are blessings, great blessings that will follow us if we follow you through. Lord, we are praying that as we go from this conference and this retreat, all decisions, all resolutions we have made here, Lord, we shall go with them and nothing will ever alter or change them in Jesus' name. Thank you because your grace is available. And your power is up to, to keep us to the end of the road. We rejoice because you who have called us, you are greater than any opposition. You are greater than anything that may come on our way. When the devil will rise as a supplanter, as an enticer, trying to tie entice us into deception, into false doctrine, oh Lord, Give us a thick skin, a resistance against all of them in Jesus' name. Thank you because of the message we have heard. Our very up our mind, we are going to stand by everything we have received. And by the grace of God, it shall be well with our soul. Thank you, Lord, because of the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray.